Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of your favorite travel podcast, Travel and Shit, where I, your host, D. Carrie, have an experiential conversation about the nuanced ways that travel intersects with regular life. I, um, happy, happy holidays, folks. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, um, you know, whatever it is you celebrate. And before I continue on, I also want to um, send extra love to those of us who are grieving during the holidays. This time of year can be particularly difficult when you are um, spending it without people that you care about, whether they are no longer with us, whether there are strained relationships or a million other reasons in between why relationships may not be um, what we would want them to be. I am sending you all so much extra love and hoping that you are able to find some semblance of peace, some semblance of joy, um, during, uh, what can be a really difficult time during the holidays. Um, Christmas is next week guys. And I know that during this time of year, a lot of us tend to get really worked up and excited about what to get the people we care about in our lives if we um, indulge in buying presents or celebrate with gifts. And I wanted to take a little time out this week to kind of, I don't know, um, encourage us to slow down and remember that there is magic in the mundane. Uh, sometimes it takes you to tell yourself that it's magical. And other times it just needs to be viewed from a new perspective. Um, you know, I don't know what that can look like for you in your gift giving. I've got a few suggestions, Avi. Um, but I'll save that for um, after I dive into this week's reflection, if you will. Uh, I've done a lot of regular shit on some really spectacular trips. And I'm hoping that this is a reminder that if you look for it, and sometimes if you just change your perspective, you know, I remind us every week that travel is so much more than vacation. And a lot of times we do not vacation things on our vacation. And that leads us to my first example of the magic in the mundane is grocery store. So I am definitely a millennial. I now of the things now that Amazon fresh and target delivers y'all Costco and BJ's also deliver. Um, and there are so many, you know what, this is an act of love. I'm going to share with you something. Um, and Ooh, I wanted to keep it to myself for very selfish reasons, but let me tell y'all something. If you are in any area that will do Amazon fresh deliveries, they got crab legs, y'all. They got frozen crab legs. I, that is, I'd say, I don't know if that's my favorite food or like my second, like my one A and one B is like mac and cheese and mac and, and mac and cheese and crab legs. I, um, depends on the day for me to tell you what my favorite is, but Amazon fresh has them. You can order them and get them delivered with your grocery haul. Um, as well as baby them brownies, just the basic. I don't like the one with like, um, I won't say I don't like the one with the caramel. I never ordered that, but just like they got basic brownies, right? Four in a pack. It's Amazon fresh brand. So, so, so damn good. Pro tip, bacon fried brownies. You uh, render some bacon and then just 
fry your brownie in the bacon fat. Like it's not like a deep fry. It's really just a warming up of your brownie, if you will. Baby, delicious. Holiday delight. Try it even outside of the holiday time of year. It's one of my favorite sweet treats. Um, So that was me sharing. This is coming from wanting to fully embrace 2024 in a space of abundance. I do not want to live in lack. We are not dwelling in scarcity, you know, calling all of these positive things into our worlds. And so I'm sharing with you all that two of my favorites are readily available on Amazon Fresh. Now I mention all that to say that this is the now of things for me. I personally do not enjoy going to the grocery store because I would have to go out of my way um, to go to one. On my commute home, I am not passing um, a grocery store that I would like to stop in to get anything. Um, so I don't really fuck with them. My partner does all the grocery shopping. God bless. I barely go in the kitchen. However, there was a time in my life when I did go to the grocery store and it was always annoying. It was never anything that I looked forward to. There was no excitement to it, but baby, Norway was actually exciting. And it's all because it was fucking new to me. Everything was in Norwegian. I had to get on Google, uh, well, Google Translate. Another pro tip, if you don't know, Google Translate will also translate a photo. So you can use your camera to capture or just hover the camera, like just put in, so you don't have to literally take the picture, just put your camera through Google Translate over the label or whatever the product is that has uh, the phrase that you need translated. And the app will use your camera to translate that for you. So I'm walking around the grocery store. Granted, some things are very easy to kind of figure out, but imagine trying to buy a pack of ramen, like a bowl of ramen. I remember I actually, I think I actually bought one, but it wasn't like ramen like I was familiar with in the States. It was just like a ramen-esque product, if you will, meaning that it's at hot water, I'm assuming. But thankfully I looked at it because I didn't know whether or not I had a way to heat up water. Like I didn't know if there were pots and all that shit or like a hot water kettle or something to boil my water earlier. I knew I could just put the shit in the microwave though. Cause I'm pretty sure I remembered there was a microwave. Also 2023 most plate. Well, this was what? 2019. I think I went in 2019. Um, most places have a microwave. So I was not as concerned with that, but I needed to figure out whether or not I had to add hot water or I could microwave the package. So I'm walking around just trying to like scan random things and oranges and oranges and apple is an apple, but packaging where you see there's an onion on it, or you see there's an apple on it, but do I eat all the other shit that's in there? You know what I mean? Little things like that. Um, so Norway was a good time. It, seems like it should be something that is very simple. And maybe for some of us, it is, I guess, if you have a diet that really consists of just like produce and meats, um, you can eyeball that and just purchase it. But if you're, pa- if you're buying packaged shit, if you're buying something that you want snacks, if God forbid you have food allergies, it's a little bit more work than you would expect. I was not expecting it to be as laborious as it was, but it was still kind of new and exciting. And then of course you got to add on the currency factor on top of it. So that was also at like, I think I landed relatively late, maybe like between eight and 12. And I, give a window like that because the grocery store was still open, but I know that their buses stopped running. So I feel like if the grocery store is open, unless it's like a 24 hour store, it couldn't in my mind have been that late. But if your buses stopped running, how early could it be? You get what I'm saying? So Norway was 
exciting um, because it was the first time I think that I remember really. Yeah, I just looked over some of the other ones, uh, except for Bali. I'll get back to that in a second. But Norway was um, that was interesting. Um, but pro tip: Google Translate will absolutely absolutely let you use your camera to translate. Um, I went at that experience alone. However, in Guadeloupe, I actually had help. Thankfully, my hosts from the day's excursion, Ben and Katia of Surf Guada, they are most adorable couple. I had a great time with them during the day. Um, they actually offered to bring me to the grocery store before they dropped me off to help me kind of pick out you know, groceries because they speak French, uh, France, Jesus. They speak French in Guadeloupe. I don't. So I did not want a repeat of Norway because it took me a while, like just walking around. I tend to make things more complicated than they need to be sometimes, but that's me and my personality. And I'd venture to assume that there's a few of you out there who may know that occasionally what may be simple to others comes with a few more steps in your head. So that was such a gift to have them with me. Little things like sausages. I prefer my sausages with the casing. I believe that I expressed that to Ben and Katia and they suggested a sausage to me. They I don't know if they gave me any like little explanation or anything to it, but when I tell you, I was so surprised at the way that bitch cooked up. I don't know if I was supposed to, I don't know if they boil their sausages there, but I fry mine. I like to just put them right on the stove top and you just leave them on one side till it browns. And then you flip it over, leave it on the other side till that shit cooks. And then if you're feeling froggy, if it splits on its own, you can split it open, cut it in half. Like that's the way I do my sauces on the, on the stove top. Um, that's not what it was happening with this sausage. I was very shocked to see the shit oozing out. It's like it found a hole in the casing and then it just started like spilling out. It wasn't liquid but it was loose if that makes sense i was a little perturbed didn't taste great because yes of course i still tried it um but it also didn't taste like that bad um i was i'm a fan of making my own breakfast especially if i don't have shit to do in the morning so if i'm going to grab anything i'm definitely going to grab some beers i love trying beers in new places um, definitely going to buy like some snacks, shit that I could do late night and all the jazz and breakfast stuff. I'll grab some eggs. I'll grab maybe, uh, some bread and I don't know, like a meat that I could either do a sandwich or something that I don't like, for example, ham or turkey. I could throw some turkey on the pan, warm that shit up and do like, um, a turkey and cheese melt or a ham and cheese melt, or you could just do a turkey and cheese sandwich with some ham. You see what I'm saying? Like you got the options. These are things I'm throwing out there for your next little travel. If you decide that you want to have some things in your accommodations so that you're not always having to spend money. Sometimes places close early and you don't necessarily consider that you might be fucking hungry after hours and after hours is different in different locations but guadalupe was an interesting one i also remember that it was something as simple as shit are these organic or are these not organic what is the difference in these different fruits like i'm seeing the same thing in two different boxes and it's giving different numbers so i'm assuming that one is the other also there were fruits that i'd never seen before or there were fruits that i wasn't familiar with and it's like so potatoes, which is a vegetable, but different potatoes. Like I know there's yucca, there's, um, potatoes, there's yams, there's sweet potatoes. I think sweet potatoes and yams are actually different all my life. I've been assuming they were the same. Can't tell you what the difference is. I thought they were the same. I recently heard someone say that they're not, didn't fact check, but different potatoes. 
I'm looking at them from the outside. I mean, I know what the sweet potato versus a white potato, but a white potato versus, I don't know what the fuck color is inside. I'm looking at a whole bunch of different fucking potatoes and I don't know what's what. They're all fucking root vegetables, but I'm not certain which I might be interested in. You feel me? So, um, while some things seem like they should be so very simple on the outset, once you kind of get into it, you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it. So I was very grateful to have their assistance in Guadalupe. However, it still turned out that there were differences in what seemingly would have been the same anywhere I'd have gone. Uh, I also went to, okay, even Bali I had mentioned. That was interesting to me because I feel as if that was the most diverse group of people that I saw in the grocery store. It was a mix of what I assumed to be Indonesian folks. People just were just from locals. They like I'm born here, raised here, or I'm from someplace else in the country and moved here. Um, Indonesian folks, right? But then there was a bunch of white folks. I think I even saw a couple of other black people around. And it was just like, okay, so granted, I was in Bali, which is kind of a place where people travel frequently. It's not like it's some place that I don't think Guadalupe is as heavily trafficked in terms of vacation destination or um, even places to relocate for either a short period of time, maybe six months to a year, or, you know, just becoming uh, an expat and just completely relocating to for, you know, any number of years. So Bali was interesting because there was um, a greater number of people that didn't look like they were from there. So that was a little cute surprise. There also seemed to be a lot of English speakers in the store. A lot of times you go places and it's like, this is a normal thing. This isn't a tourist attraction. So you can't necessarily expect the tourist treatment. You can't expect that because you don't speak the local language that you'll be able to find someone who will be able to speak with you in whatever your native tongue is. So I was quite surprised to see that, or at least to hear English was being spoken you know, in a couple of different pockets. So it felt very, um, okay, if I needed to come back here, there's somebody I can find in here to kind of ask a question to, even though a lot of the shit that I'm looking at, I have no clue what it says. I think I went to just get like some snacks or something or whatever. And it was just like, okay, well, let's, let's wander around and see what kind of shit they have in there. Every once in a while, I'll go through like their beauty aisle or I'll go through like, uh, you pass through like the kitchen aisle, just random aisles, things that are normal to you in wherever you're from. I like to just kind of peek into what's normal for other people in other places. Like, what does y'all makeup selection look like? Am I going to find my color here? I'm curious. You feel me? Little things like that entertain me when I go places. So I would suggest that you consider thinking of um, how you can kind of shift your perspective on your next trip to kind of place things in, I don't want to say perspective again, but place things in a light where just because you do it at home doesn't mean that you do it the same way here. And two, as a reminder, you're in somebody else's home. You may be on vacation, but these people are coming and going from work, stay the fuck out the way and be respectful. So those are my international um, grocery store experiences, but even locally, there are some really cool little quirks and differences to regional groceries. If grocers, if you will, Vermont, I was very tickled to see that they had full on aisles of wine, aisles of beer. And then there was, even, I, I'm pretty certain there was a section for hard liquors also for like for spirits. Um, there was also a champagne closet, like, you know, the, the frozen, the frozen goods, the chilled section, excuse me, we got bottles of wood for like $50 in the grocery store. Like we didn't have to go next door. Like I know in New York, I feel like in the Bronx is like a good example. There's a stop and shop that has their regular grocery store. I think it's a stop and shop. And then like immediately next door, like you can get into it from inside the grocery store. Also, there's a liquor store. So you could either enter from the street, like from the parking lot on the outside, or you can just go inside from the grocery store. So 
it's not, I'm a Queens girl. We don't really got those. I've never seen one in Queens. Um, can't say I've seen one in Brooklyn either. I was tickled to see the shit in the Bronx, but the Bronx is new to me. But alcohol in your grocery store, that was a really fun one. Also, one of the things that I do not do often in the States, but farmer's markets, open markets, Canada had a really fun selection. There was Jean Talon market. That one was in Montreal. I had my first smoked salmon sandwich and I am hooked. It's one of my favorite breakfast foods now is um, chef's kiss. Chef, uh, What is it? It's smoked salmon, cream cheese, and then you can have fun. You could do capers. Um, we've done what are they, uh, olives. We've done uh, lettuce. We've done spinach. We've done, I think... I think like arugula on there. Like there are different ways, different pairings that you can put on it, but your base is, oh, and it's on a bagel. Um, I prefer regular, like original plain ass bagels. I don't like everything bagels. That's something to put on your bingo card about me that you don't need to know, but now you do. Um, plain bagel, cream cheese, smoked salmon, and then the assorted accoutrement. You put like a leafy green and then something with a little bit of um, like a salty kick, olives, capers. Um, had it for the first time, Jean Talon, nice open market. What's cool about it is that around the perimeter, there are also stores like brick and mortar stores. So you can go into different stores like bakeries. There was a meat shop. There was um, coffee shops. And that was a uh, primarily around the perimeter, but then on the inside, you also had, um, what do you call it? Um, florists, more meats, more vegetables, again, your open market setup. So that was really cool. And then St. Lawrence market was in Toronto. What was cool about that one was it was more of an indoor setup, but it was still like an open market, if you will, but just like inside. So you could go, uh, downstairs, upstairs level, there was uh, a little bit of outside seating. And again, they had bakers, they have florists, there was fresh foods. I mean, they had fantastic fresh selections. I mean, looking at their meats and seafoods in particular, I'd have been there every week, every week, fresh fruits. They also had a lot of dry fruit selection. There was also like a candy shop downstairs. Um, like I'm talking tons of options, lots of nuts, um, spices, everything was there. It was a really, really nice little spot to pull up to. And I absolutely suggest that you try shit like that on your vacations, especially markets where you've got a bunch of different vendors. You can talk to the people that are from there. You can talk to them and find out places to visit. Imagine finding someone that sells wine and then learning that the vineyard is only an hour away and you've got the time to kill. So you go visit. You can talk to people that sell shit. You could talk to people that just shop there. I enjoy markets. I would highly suggest that you visit on your trips and consider you don't even have to make it like a wild um, thought to try a new one in your own neighborhood. I remind you guys that you don't have to go that far to be considered a traveler to me. Um, you could go to another borough if you're from the city, New York City. You could go to another neighborhood, essentially, and try a different market. Take the extra drive on a Sunday or a Saturday one day and go to the farmer's market. Walk around, feel some shit out. Um, a lot of communities have their own different. Uh, I know there's a night market in Queens there. Uh, and I feel like that is seasonal, though. Seasonal markets in general. I would highly consider that the things that are, oh, my God, this was so cute. I did this here in this country or over in this city. Consider just going next door to where you currently are and making it and experience. Um, additionally, something that I feel like is very mundane that we do all the fucking time at home. And then there are really quirky ways that travel makes it more exciting. Fucking driving, parking, parking. Again, I say parking. So 
lots of places have very different driving experiences. I can say I was the most terrified of the people driving in Casablanca. I didn't feel like there was any order at all. Even crossing the street is a big deal. Ooh, funny story. So, um, my partner's cousin, hi, Yessie. She's from Puerto Rico. Like she lived there and she came here for school, for college. And then I think she stayed here to work. And she was telling us this story about one time she was with some friends. They were going out someplace and she just walks out into the middle of the street and does the, you know, the hand, the stop thing to tell the drivers to stop. And she was just like, I was very uh, frightened and uh, surprised to see that does not work here. Um, So it's like, thank God she was okay. But like in hindsight, she was like, yeah, my friends were like, what are you doing? Jump back. No, no, no. But for her, where she's from, that is the norm. You can just walk out into the street, put your hand out and the drivers are going to stop. Baby. Um, I am not used to that. I don't do that. Um, so crossing the street in other countries has always been one of those things where even when they drive on the opposite side of the street, looking both ways has a different meaning because now you're kind of looking the wrong way. If you're really not being perceptive and making sure to look in the right areas of the direction that you're looking. So Bermuda was the most, um, that was the first time I left the country And it was also like, I don't know why, but well, no, I know why we had kind of stopped on like a blind bend to see a landmark that I had. Yeah. I randomly got a ride from like a stranger, but like, as now that I'm older, I think back on some of the things like I did on my solo travels and my God, had I had a child and I learned some of the things. Like, had they done some of the shit that I have done, I'd have shit myself. I ain't gonna hold you, ma. You strong one. You a strong one. Um, I've done some really dumb shit. Thank God I'm here to laugh about it and tell the story. But, um, I went to the museum slash zoo slash aquarium in Bermuda. It was actually gorgeous. Um, and... I was talking about some place that I wanted to go that wasn't too far away that I wanted to see. Apparently it was like a mile. I didn't mind walking it, but one of the young ladies at the register on the way out was saying, you should probably take the bus. We don't really have, um, sidewalks. That's another thing. Not everybody, not everywhere is built for pedestrians. Driving is one thing to think of, but on the flip side, whether you're driving or not, you got to be considerate of pedestrians. Some cities, states, countries have different laws. If in New York, a pedestrian steps in the street, the driver is, the driver carries a little bit more responsibility than the pedestrian does. I want to say in New Orleans, maybe not the case. Apparently you can sue a pedestrian if you hit them and suffer damage to your car. Like they don't play that shit there. Um, so different places have different fucking rules. And if you don't know, it can be a hell of a time trying to figure shit out and getting from one place to another back to Bermuda. So there were no sidewalks. So the young lady suggested that I take the bus. I said, cool, cool. Went outside, sat at the bus stop. I'm taking selfies. And a young man that had worked there, um, one of the guys came out. I'd seen him at the register. He was there with the girl and she was explaining, you know, where I should go and all that shit. And he's coming out, I guess his shift is over and he sees me at the bus stop and he's like, yo, so I'm actually driving into the city. Do you want to ride? I don't mind dropping you off in like, you know, the main area or something. And fuck it. Let's go. He was mad chill, was very risk rough, didn't give any creep vibes. Caveat, trust your gut. If you are someone that does not necessarily live a life where you have a lot of people interactions and you don't trust your radar, your meter of reading people, that may not be for you. However, if you know that you work with people every day for work, if you have whatever capacity, you, you got to kind of trust yourself, know yourself and your strengths and weaknesses and whether or not that's the right move for you. Don't fuck around and try to be, um, 
oh, well, yeah, D. Harry was like, yeah, she did it. So uh, mm -mm, don't do that. Know yourself, right? Um, so that is mine. Stay safe. Protect your neck. But really cool guy. He actually did a really nice drive through of what, being able to explain different things that we were passing by. And he said, um, well, he actually pulled over on the side of the road. And I'm so glad old girl was just like, I wouldn't have seen, I wouldn't have known what the fuck I was looking for had I seen it. So I'm really glad that he offered to take me. It was really like around a blind curve and it was an open space where you can see, it was a little island that I was trying to see. And so you could see the island and you, you know, it, it was beautiful. Long the short, he pulls over, I'm getting out the car and you can barely see around again, blind curve. So you can't really see more than say 50, maybe a hundred. I don't know if I want to say yards or meters. It's not a full block, but then it curves. So you can't see who's coming around the curve in one direction. And then the other side, you can see a little bit further, but then there's still another curve that way. So it's like, I'm looking both ways, but then I'm realizing I'm looking in for like in the wrong lane for the traffic to come. It took me forever to cross the fucking street. Thankfully he got out the car and was just like, okay, no, go, you're fine. You can cross. Um, but pedestrian rules. Cars driving on different sides of the streets, all those things matter. Um, traffic lights aren't as plentiful in some areas. And then just the norms of driving are different. Again, Casablanca, terrifying. Me, D, I would not make it there. And I, I drive in New York City. Like, I live in Queens. I drive in Manhattan every fucking day. I drive through Brooklyn. I drive through three fucking boroughs every day. I am a very confident driver. I trust Baby girl got it. Okay. My daddy was a professional driver for work. He used to drive trucks. My dad told me how to drive. I drive. I do this. And your girl could park. Parallel park. Okay. So don't play with me. I got this. But not in Casablanca. Couldn't be me. Even in Bali. Bali was wild. In New York, we got all these scooters and these e-bikes and shit. So on the one hand, I hate them because... They in and out of traffic, they're always in the way, they're always doing some wild shit, and I am terrified that one of them is just going to skirt, skirt, hit my car, and then just keep going, right? But um, I also like my delivery pretty quick, so I don't want to say fuck them completely, <laughs> so for selfish reasons, um, but in Bali, tons of scooters, they're every fucking where, and they're also in and out of the traffic with you. So it's just like, one thing that I do respect about the people that were driving in Bali is baby, when somebody speeds up to go around you, they get around you and then they keep going. Like they're not going to speed up, go around you and then go slower than you're going. That's Long Island drivers for you. Y'all can't drive out there. You can't. Um, but still love you. I just don't like driving with y'all. But they had order to it. It just did not work for me. Me and my American driving sensibilities, it, uh, it, it was just too much chaos. So many vehicles all over the place and they were all like, it all made sense to them. They worked together. Oddly enough, that doesn't necessarily happen in the States. It made, it looked like a choreographed number out there. I would not feel com comfortable driving there either. So Keep that in mind when you're renting a car in other places. Also remember that you have to, um, in, not necessarily interpret, but if you're listening to um, like Google Maps or some type of navigation that's trying to get you from point A to point B, a lot of these things are in different languages, okay? Um, so things to consider. Uh, also, if you're looking at signage, street signs, a lot of them are fucking tiny. Um, I think that's so disrespectful, me personally, that just says, you don't want me here. You only want people that already know where they're going. And that is a grievance of mine. Um, otherwise, consider how quickly you may have to make a decision about where you're going when trying to navigate signage in different languages, um, merging one lane to another, all those things. Other places that were... Um, totally a pain in my ass. I would say one in particular, Dallas drop. First of all, 
that rental was wild. I think I spent $900 on the rental and I went into it thinking that the rental was going to be like $600. They got me good. I have got no need to get in that. Y'all get it. Everything's overpriced. I got played. It sucked. What I was not expecting was tolls. So we have tolls over like bridges and tunnels and stuff in New York. We're about to end up with godforsaken congestion pricing. Not even going to jump into my feelings about that, except for the fact that it's a fucking terrible idea. And I think it's horrible and inconsiderate and it just shits on the people that live here. Um, leaving it at that, there were so many like toll roads in Dallas. And the way the young lady at the counter at the rental place explained it was like, like it, it, it's not like our tolls in New York where you, where you know you're going through a toll. They're just on the highway. And if you enter or exit at certain price, places it's certain price all of it was confusing to me so we had to get like an easy pass that was um going to be able to work for that system there so that's something to consider when you're visiting other places as well what is their toll system um the what do you call them the parkways the interstates the expressways what are the what are you driving in? What kind of vehicle are you riding in? Because I want to say it's parkways have lower bridges than um, expressways. So trucks and certain tall or larger vehicles are not allowed on parkways, but on expressways you may be allowed on. So little things like that. Not only is a ticket something to consider, but you also don't want to end up ripping your top off under an overpass or something like that. Um, also parking. I've had some interesting parking experiences. One of the most interesting was in Qua Montreal, but by the grace of God, my shit did not get towed. And in French, first of all, the signage is all in French, all the fucking signs, French. You can find people that speak English everywhere. Um, And by everywhere, I mean, like, I'm certain there's some place where you can't. But I did not have a difficult time uh, finding anybody that spoke French. So we drove up from New York. It was maybe a six-hour trip. Not too bad. Straight shot. I don't mind the drive at all. And I say this as a passenger princess. Boyfriend does all the driving. Um, But we ended up having to ask some officers who were outside to help us navigate the parking signage. Because even in translating it, parking signage is one of the wildest things to be confusing to me. I don't understand that. I do. They want your fucking money. It's all predatory. But parking signage, I think, is confusing across the board. It was no different in Montreal, except it was in French. So we asked the officers, and they kind of clarified for us. And they said that we could leave the car on this side and in this area because this was not reserved for residents. And we wouldn't need any particular signage or ticketing or anything like that. It was just open to public parking. Parked the car there, went about our business, had a good ass time. We're coming back to the Airbnb that night. And we were only maybe like a block and a half parked away. So it was actually close as we could get without um, incurring any issues with like resident parking and needing permits and like a little plaque or a sticker, which apparently you can buy from a store or a laundromat or something like that. But why the extra steps? So we're walking back. And it's funny because we have, we're walkers. We'll walk for, you know, as much as necessary, as long as we're not fucked up. Right. And by fucked up, I mean like tired, like in pain. So we were walking from someplace and we started to see that, oh shit, there's a truck that's just driving along, placing no parking signage by parked cars in areas that were like available to park in. And so we're like, wow, that's foul. Yo, can you imagine coming home from work, parking your car? And then the next morning it's not there because all of a sudden at night, it was like 10, 11 o'clock. They're putting out signage that says no parking the next morning at like, um, from 6 AM to 6 PM. And so we're like, wow, that's crazy. 
And then we get closer and we're like, oh shit, like they're still placing these signs out. And we're getting closer and we're closing. And sure enough, they're placing these signs right by where we parked our car. And thank my Lord above that we saw that because the car absolutely would have been towed the next morning. Um, don't know that they would have replaced, like put the car back or put, I wouldn't even, even if they put the car back someplace nearby, because I can, I can't envision that that would, I'm not even going to get into it. I just, lots of ways that that could go. I'm not familiar with their rules there. But, um, pro tip, check your shit. If you're parking on the street and you're not staying too far away, even if you are staying far enough away, check on your car. You want to be able to get back home. You don't want to have to navigate anybody else's, uh, parking system, rules, regulations, laws, ticketing, procedures, types of ID. Imagine if I need it. Um, like when a car gets titled, uh, a car gets towed, you need more than just your license in order to get it back. You need like license and registration and um, probably depending on what their rules are. What if you need a fucking title? Are you doing a road trip with the title to your fucking car? No. And I wouldn't actually suggest that either because God forbid somebody steals your car. They could say they own that shit. You, they got the title in their possession now. So that's something to keep in mind. But um, parking is wild different in a lot of different places. And it seems really mundane. And it seems like one of those things that you don't even need to think about in terms of traveling. But even if you decide not to drive, other people are driving around you. And the pedestrian laws, the pedestrian rules and norms and the culture of how people get around in different cities can absolutely be different. It is not always the same. And there's always something that you should pay attention to, not necessarily do any major research in advance. I'm not necessarily saying that it needs to be a science fair project, but consider these things. They seem so innocuous, but they're absolutely something that you do everywhere you fucking go. You got spas, you have manis, you have petties. I do tattoos in different places. They're all things that people do in their regular life and tend to put more importance on or um, get colored with the the fruit scented markers, if you will, when they're done on vacation. Um, so I'm going to cut my list short. Um, spas are great. I've gone to some really great ones. My favorites have been Bermuda, Thailand, Bali, and Toronto. Absolute worst was in Peru terrible. Um, but I say all that to say, I do have a few holiday suggestions for you. The way we went over like the mundane things here, right? Like the way we went over stuff that just seems so basic. Oh my God. Merry Christmas. Consider things like a grocery haul, like Christmas is at the time of recording. It's next week. At this point, if you ain't ordered it already, it's not likely to be here on time. So consider things that you can do without having to um, be at the behest of the delivery peoples because they deserve holidays also. Consider a grocery haul. Tell somebody you got like $150 on the next grocery and actually go get the groceries for them or buy them a gift card um, for their groceries. Also consider something like laundry service if you know somebody that just had a new baby, if you know somebody that has kids, or if you just know somebody that's fucking lazy, consider paying for a pickup and drop off of their laundry. You don't necessarily have to do the laundry for them unless y'all are, you know, cool like that. Then you could do the laundry for them. But consider just paying for somebody's laundry to get done. If they're particular about their laundry, like I am, I am not allowing anyone but me and my man to wash my clothes. Um, consider dry cleaning, coats, uh, shit like comforters, larger items that nobody really wants to like go through their closet, pull the things out, bring them to the cleaners, pay for it, pick it up, all that. You could do that for somebody. You can offer them a dry cleaning haul. You can put aside $50, $100. Dry cleaning ain't as cheap as it used to be no more. I think they charge like $6 for a fucking shirt now. The fuck? Um, I don't really get shit dry cleaned. I bring my, um, only time I'm in the dry cleaner is when I have to put like my end of the year. Um, and I'd rather do it at the beginning of the year, honestly. 
Um, well, I guess you could do it at the beginning and the end of the year. It depends on how your shit's, your usage or your wear. But like coats and um, heavier sweaters I bring to the cleaners. Only other reason why I'm there is putting a patch on my carry, uh, my carry on bag. Um, but consider doing laundry service for somebody um, in terms of the dry cleaner, picking up their shit or just paying for it to be picked up and delivered if you yourself don't necessarily want to go and do that for them. Uh, gift cards to services that they do regularly, mani, petty, massage, facials, hair. Um, a lot of things are routine, right? But it hits when it's not your responsibility. Make sense? Things that we do all the time, but that we don't necessarily want to do. The gift of someone taking that off your plate and letting that be their burden and not your burden, personal fan of. Um, consider massage, gift cards. Self-care should absolutely be a normal routine that we all do. But unfortunately, um, I'm very well aware that budget is a thing as well as just the accessibility of a lot of things. Sometimes it's just going out of your way to go to the massage spot that you know gives good massages as opposed to the kind of little smaller, not as um, fancy one that may be a little bit out of the way. Get somebody a gift card to get a service like that. Or if you know Shorty gets her nails done every two weeks, get the gift card for where she gets her nails done. If they do their lashes, I don't know pay for that for him. That's a gift card. And another thing that I suggested on this little list of things that you could do with the last minute, dinner for two on you. You don't even have to be the person that they go with. Although depending on who it is, that's also a really fun gift. Um, I know that one of my more recent sentimental gifts was I took my grandma to dinner or was it lunch? I think we went to lunch. It's my grandma. We went earlier in the day. I took my grandma to lunch for her birthday and we had a time. I ended up getting roped into doing, uh, you know, an errand and shit with her, but we were going to be in the area anyway. Um, but QT time, quality time. Every year I buy my mom, um, a ticket to go see a Broadway show. And it's our afternoon together. We go, I pick her up. We drive to the train. We go out to the city. We go eat, we go to a play, and we have a good time together. It doesn't necessarily have to, and it's one of my favorite gifts because I don't got to go nowhere to get it. All I got to do is go through who's playing, who's seeing what. Sometimes I'll ask for commentary, like what she's more interested in or not. Because at this point, we do it every year, so she knows it's coming. Um, But other times, I just surprise her with something. And it's always one of my favorite times of the year. It's my personal favorite gift to give and get. And I end up getting something out of it also because I get to go, but more importantly, I get to spend time with my mom. Um, Merry Christmas, girl. But I say all that to say, another really great cheat code to giving gifts of that nature is it gives you the opportunity to one again, not have to wait for it to get there. You ain't got to go nowhere to get it for the most part. You could do um, digital gift cards. You could just do that shit online. But it also gives you extra time to get your coin together, baby. You can either use Christmas money that you get from somebody else to pay for a gift for somebody else, or you could wait till another paycheck, or you could wait till um, the overtime that you worked last minute to have money for Christmas, but didn't end up coming in the Christmas check or the check before Christmas. It comes a week or two after, or the holidays, a check or two after, all of that rigmarole. Now you can uh, pay the piper. You done told somebody, I got you on dinner for two for Valentine's Day. Push that shit out if you really need to. Or um, I have your first grocery haul of the new year. You got yourself an extra week. Little things like that, baby, think on your toes. It doesn't have to be stressful if you don't want it to be stressful. Consider ways to make the magic appear in the mundane. I hope you guys all have a happy, healthy, safe, loving, peaceful, fantastic Christmas. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week in the final episode of the year, right? Yeah. We still got one more Thursday in the year, y'all. And I'll see you then. Merry Christmas.